music, your generation, you're in trouble. You, you guys right. are trying to be professional musicians. You, you need people to get the cover charge. You talked about Charlie Parker, and you put it in perspective about, I think it really kind of, we talked about the environment that was in the department at the time. Right. Can you elaborate on that? Well, yeah, it's, it's actually something that I heard um, a jazz trumpet player named Roy Hargrove mention, and he was being interviewed about music, and at the time he said, you know, I want to go out and I, and I want to hook up with some guys like Q-Tip and Nelly and those cats because these are guys that are around my age. And I grew up listening to Dizzy and Clifford Brown and, you know, and then later went Marcellus and, and uh, Lee Morgan and jazz trumpet players. But I also am a young man and I grew up listening to beats and listening to hip hop. And the musicians that I'm emulating as a jazz musician like Miles Davis or whatever, they played the hot music of their generation. Well, the hot music of their generation was bebop. So, what kind of, and, and I'm paraphrasing him, but what kind of musician would I be if I didn't interact with the hot music of my generation, which is hip-hop? And so, subsequently, if you look at some of the records and some of the things Roy Hargrove has done since this interview about five years ago, that's exactly what he's done. So, Alongside of doing his jazz records, for a period of time, he did D'Angelo's tour where he was in a horn section with uh, Kumba, Frank Lacey, and played on those gigs and brought that sound and that message to the generation of people that listen to D'Angelo's music. And we've seen a number of jazz musicians to move into the world of hip-hop. Some have done it commercially, and some have done it with some authenticity of trying to actually go over there and make something new happen. Uh, Russell Gunn's ethnomusicology album comes to mind, where he has an upright bass player, a guy playing Rosen synthesizer, a DJ, a percussionist, and three horn players. That's about as real as that kind of merger gets when you, you merge the acoustic world with the electronic world, have improvisation, have spoken word, and it's all happening at once. But if you trace all of those elements back to the 1950s, you see the exact same thing. There were spoken word artists that were in, in the Greenwich Village who played gigs with the beboppers. And there were people that tried to dance to bebop, but, you know, that didn't quite work, so there was a consciousness of dances that came out of that time period. And when you listen to the rhythm of bebop, it's the same rhythm that's being used by rappers. Now you can dance to it, though. They figured it out. Right. <laughs> but, but the feel yeah. and the vibe is there. Mm -hmm. Now, there, somewhere, in just my putting this on some form of documentation, somewhere there are some jazz purists that are flipping over. How dare he put jazz and hip-hop on the same level? This is, this is America's classical music. See, that's the problem right there. Everybody wants to start prepare, comparing other music to classical music, but during the time that classical music was being created, it was pop music. And, you know... There, there are folks that want to say, okay, the, well, you know, Mozart and Beethoven, those was great symphonies, this is great art music. During its day, people went out and they listened to that music and they shook their asses and they drank wine and they got full and did all the things that we do to the pop music we're listening to because that's what that music was for then. 200 years later, it's classical music, that's fine. But people forget about the context. Music is a mirror of the time that it lives in. In the context that that music was created in, in, during that time, it was pop music. I mean, so right now, based on what I'm saying, we're talking about a time 100 years from now where people will put on, you know, LL Cool J's I Need Love, and then they'll talk about the profundity of LL Cool J's work. And then it's reflected in the films he made subsequently. Right? <laughs> It'll be this deep philosophical thing because music will have evolved into something else. Yeah. I would love to be able to be yeah. here to see that, right? <laughs> <laughs> to it's see what 50 it. Cent is considered, like, you know, oh, yeah. classical. Well, right? It's like Eminem. Once he makes that movie, he's going to be suddenly <laughs> taken seriously. Once you, make, once you make the movie, get your Oscar. Yeah, yeah you know. But suddenly it's okay, you know. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's going to be a really interesting time. Good morning.